Steelers, and welcome back to another episode of this Rupee Cast featuring Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Red Rupee here calling the shots for you as always, and we have a wonderful, wonderful battle once again on Green Tooth Forge, one of my favorite maps. I know I say it every time, but damn it, it's true. I enjoy this map. It's great for Tech Marine, and he's my main man. Anyways, we've got a game that I know a few of you will probably be a bit antipathetic towards, but you know. I can't make everyone happy all the time. We've got a Chaos Mirror, so I know not everyone cares for mirrors too much. And to double it up, we're going to double down on this one. We're going old school with a retail replay. But I just saw the players and wanted to go for it. Last week we had Wurgle on, who is a great player who came on after a long hiatus from Dow 2. And once again, we've got two more players that I haven't seen in quite some time. Recently posted up a few replays. Hopefully they're sticking around. But we've got Noisy Elmo and Tiger tonight, two titans of Dawn of War, as far as that goes. Anyways, on the blue side, we've got Noisy Elmo as the Chaos Lord representing the God of Corn and all that is bloody. And then on the red side, we have Mr. Tiger as the Plague Champion representing the God of God Nurgle, who is a, a representative of all that is stinky, I guess. That's what we'll go with. All that is stinky. Anyways, Chaos, uh, both these champions probably about as different as you can get. You've got the big, nasty, tanky melee beast that is the Chaos Lord, and then you've got the ranged, kind of squishy fella over here, the Plague Champion. So we'll see how these playstyles differ. Noisy Elmo kind of sticking to his guns. No normally he goes for pretty unique builds, kind of off-the-wall stuff, and makes it work. Already starting with a triple heretic opening. I'm not sure if he knows Tiger is already the play champion or not. But we can see the Chaos Lord being very aggressive, heading straight out into there. Uh, also, Noisy Elmo going for a pretty odd cap order. Going for straight VP pressure right out of the gate. And going to try to use that Chaos Lord to stall out Tiger's capping squads early on. So he's going to prioritize those VPs, then fall back and start his backline resources. In the meantime... I already picked off a few heretics and did some nice damage and now causing these Chaos Space Marines to just have to kind of run around inside their base area or face the Chaos Lord. Plague Champion's gonna decap the center VP, but a few VPs have already ticked off. In the meantime, it looks like it didn't really work out too well for Noisy Elmo because he's kind of just not really slowed down the capping efforts. The Chaos Lord's kind of just running around looking for something to get into. He will be able to take on those heretics if he finds them. And then we've got a squad of heretics and Chaos Space Marines on this side of the map. Heretics actually hopping into the guard tower, which is curious. I'm kind of surprised they didn't just engage. Maybe that was a misclick. That was probably a misclick. No, they're going back in. I don't know what he's doing over here, but the Chaos Lord scared off the uh, heretics. And now using some corn worship to speed on after that plague champion. Noisy Elmo now getting himself some Chaos Space Marines as Tiger grabbed himself a second squad of heretics and bringing some Havocs onto the field. After spotting at least a couple squads of heretics, he's deciding to go for the Havocs right now. I'm not sure what Elmo was trying to do with these heretics. They were kind of just dodging in and out of this building. I'm not sure if he was trying to pull in the Chaos Space Marines or maybe force Tiger to upgrading grenade launchers or what, but I mean... There was no reason he wanted to do this. We've got kind of a mirror engagement over here. Heretics already taken lots of damage, and the heretics, I feel like, are going to decide the engagement. Noisy Elmo was trying to get enough distance there so that he could open up a kind of equalizing salvo right there and get the opposing heretics down to some reasonable HP. In the meantime, Chaos Lord getting a decap over here, but going to start taking Havoc Fire momentarily. He'll probably be able to get the decap and get out of there. In the meantime, Noisy Elmo bringing a Havoc squad out as well, so the build's actually very similar except for the uh, extra Heretic squad in no Noisy Elmo's pile right here. So there goes Twin Doom Blast right there. Looks like, I don't, I'm not sure, one of these squads is probably going to go down right here. Tiger retreated. It's got a few HP left. Is it going to get out? No, it does not. A second squad of heretics is able to scare off that Chaos Space Marine in the middle. It looks like we might have... Oh my goodness, it gets away with 7 HP. I was about to say, it could be even loss on either sides during those engagements. It looks like those heretics tried to flank in, but the Havocs were ready. 
positioned correctly to force them off. Tigers instantly purchasing that Lost Heretic squad back onto the field right here. And right now, those Chaos Space Marines aren't really going to do much of anything. Tiger's going to work on trying to get his side of the map back into his control. It's kind of even up. A lot of decap points on the map, not really much cap. And just as those Space Marines thought they were going to win that fight, the Chaos Heretics teleport in their aspiring champion who makes a big difference, has plenty of health, and that chainsword's pretty nasty against Chaos Space Marines. Noisy Elmo now bringing Noise Marines onto the field as well, going a very heavy Tier 1. Tiger, of course, uh, pretty much has himself as well. Neither player at this point has built up their power farms. They've been investing tons of requisition in field control. Noisy Elmo's heavy Tier 1 build has pretty much forced Tiger to respond, especially after snagging that early Heretic squad. Made a big difference right here. Chaos Lord in a bit of trouble, but he's going to retreat through that no problem. Your forces obey you. And Tiger, I think at this point, either needs to just start dropping some power and try to get the tech advantage, roll out of tier one, or just just meet up with what Noisy Ammo has on the field. There are no Raptors, of course, in retail, so that kind of changes the game up quite a bit for tier one as far as chaos is concerned. But Noisy Ammo's running the gamut with just a little bit of everything right now. He's up by about 100 VPs right now. Noise Marines trying to move in on these Havocs. It looks like one of these Chaos Marines might go down if he's not careful, but they do get that suppression noise blast off just in the nick of time. Plague Champion was moving in on the victory point, but gets deterred by a Havoc squad. Noisy Elmo is kind of just a little bit all over the place right now, and that really, I mean, you can really see both players kind of Maybe a little bit rusty, but all things considered, playing very well so far. Noisy Elmo's going for a flank in on this side with the Havocs and some un unreinforced Heretic squads. He's got two Heretic squads out specifically for capping at two members each. Heretics moving in, getting the Noise Blast cacophony, knocking them out. Oh my goodness, Noisy Elmo just lost himself a squad, however. Oh dear. I'm not sure if he was microing on this side, maybe with those noise brains, and then looked back the moment I did. Thought that his Chaos Lord had things under control. But Tiger snagged himself a sweet victory in the form of a down squad of Chaos Space Marines. So that's going to be very expensive for Noisy Elmo to get back. However, uh, momentarily here, Noisy Elmo is going to have all the wreck points except for the natural wreck right directly in front of Tiger's base. So if we look, uh, let's take a look at the resources real quick. Uh, he probably, yeah, he does have a very significant uh, requisition income difference right now. He's got almost 100 requisition more per minute. So like every few minutes, that's essentially a free squad uh, for Noisy Elmo over Tiger as far as requisition is concerned. And of course, all of these points haven't even matured yet. So that'll increase even more so unless Tiger can get some of those points back. So losing that squad is unfortunate for Noisy Elmo, but he's probably going to be able to compensate for that with the crazy amount of map control he's got going on right now. So heretic battles all over the place. There's probably been, I'd say, 30 or so heretics already killed this king. Tiger's heading into Tier 2 well ahead of Noisy Elmo. He does have his farm completely up. Noisy does have two generators up, and they didn't go up uh, quite as early as Tiger's either. So he's going to be heading into Tier 2 soon, but Tiger's definitely going to have the advantage in tech uh, momentarily. So Quick Blood Crusher, of course, could always be very effective. There's no real AV on the field right now. Obviously, for Noisy Elmo, you know, you don't really get any until Tier 2. Noise Marines move in. Noisy Elmo making a nice concentrated push here on the center VP. Chaos Lord's going way up into enemy territory while it looks like the Noise Marines are moving in for a power bash. Heretics retreat on this side of the map. I'm not sure exactly why. That must have been a misclick. I feel like it has to have been. Noise Marines doing a number on these Heretics. They're trying to retreat, taking tons of damage in the meantime. Chaos Lord charging just headlong into the full army right here. 
taken some even turret fire right there from the enemy. Manages to kill a single generator under suppression fire. Might get a second. Chaos Lord looks like he's about to go down though, if he doesn't get out of there. And oh my goodness, at zero HP, I have one of the <laughs> one of the strongest kill the weeks I've seen in a while. It hit all those heretics, hit the havocs as well. Allowed these noise marines to buy a little more time. Chaos Lord may go down anyways, but if he escapes, nice Doom Blast suppressing the heretics and allowing the Chaos Lord to escape with his life. Noise Marines finish off the node and get out of there with a single loss. Wow, what a nice, beautifully played engagement there from Noisy Elmo. He stalled around with that Chaos Lord, stomped in there, got a, a wonderful kill the week off, did a little bit of damage, smashed the whole gen farm and just well played all around. Flight Champion kind of hanging out over here. Tiger's micro maybe a little stretch with that last engagement allowed that uh, leg champ to kind of idle around, which is not something Tiger needed right now. He desperately needs to get map control right at this particular juncture. He's going to be way behind on requisition. Uh, at this point, I'm assuming he's going to have to be saving up for a Dreadnought, which will be a nice a nice bit of control for the Blood Crusher. He can upgrade it to Siege 2 if that thing turns out to be more of a nuisance. The Tiger's going for a gen bash of his own, has both of his heretic squads hanging out right here. Hits Touch of Nurgle before the engagement, engagement even starts. A little bit of a preemptive use of that global ability. But assuming he was going to need it to continue this gen bash, in the right engagement, Touch of Nurgle can certainly be a tide changer. However, with a Blood Crusher coming out, that Touch of Nurgle's just not going to amount to anything. Unfortunately, I guess that's going to turn into kind of a waste of global right there. Heretic's in a lot of trouble, they need to get out of there. If that Blood Crusher chooses to charge them, which he is doing, but then turns to engage the other squad, it looks like. So, kind of fortunate that either Noisy Elmo didn't prioritize that squad, or decided to just do more damage to the other, because he didn't think he was going to get the squad kill. Noise Marines now upgraded with their Blastmaster, which hits right there in front of it, just before those Chaos Space Marines retreat. Blood Crusher made a big difference right there. If he didn't have that, that touch of Nurgle probably would have been a lot more dangerous for all of his infantry. Tiger is in fact getting himself a Chaos Dreadnought, and it looks like the Havocs are upgrading straight to the Mark of Siege to help deal with this Blood Crusher. He doesn't want that thing to having any sort of map control, as it can be so quick and devastating to infantry. It can really push you off the map easily. That Laz Cannon either needs to go for the victory point, or sorry, the uh, garrison over here, or retreat. It looks like it's kind of doing neither right now, buying some time, trying to stall out until this Chaos Dreadnought gets into firing range with that Auto Cannon. Auto Cannon, of course, does light anti-vehicle damage. Noisy Elmo's not even afraid of it, though. He's just going to charge right in after that Havoc Squad and at least try to get one more kill on it. However, I think if he pushes his advantage at this point, he might end up losing the Blood Crusher. So he decides to fall back, recognizes the threat that he's in, Potentially doesn't want to lose that. He's on such a such a forward foot right here He's actually bringing Plague Marines out into the field right now And you can see he's got all these squads plus two more He's got the Blood Crusher and now the Plague Marines coming out. So the difference in army size is pretty significant uh, Right now it's 71 to 64 But uh, a lot more squads for Noisy Elmo and you can really see that in the map control uh, still has, wow, now over 100 requisition income higher than Tiger. This Noise Marine trying to get one last Blastmaster shot in, but it looks like it's going to go down if it's not careful. Oh, special attack misses, and that probably, probably would have killed that Noise Marine had it connected. So Chaos Lord has just constantly been refusing to yield against anything this, this game. Siege Marines upgraded in the back though, getting their, the only, there is only war upgrade as well to increase their damage another 20%. But uh, I don't think a kill the weak note is going to save the Chaos Lord this time around. But Plague Marines are on the field, start pouring rockets into that Chaos Dreadnought. Nice rocket shot destroying some cover there next to the Chaos Space Marines, but not going to do any real damage themselves. Noisy Elmo spots the moving in heretics, decides to fall back, some nice map awareness and the quick micro between a couple different engagements right there makes the difference and allow those Chaos Space Marines to deal with those heretics. 
you can see that auto cannon just isn't quite doing enough to that blood pressure when it's in melee. It looks like it's moving in to maybe try to get a couple melee shots off, but it charges out. Noisy Elmo just lost a squad. Oh, there's a plate cloud. The plate cloud probably went down right between all those worshipping heretics. Took out one of the squads, almost took out another. It's down to a single member. A nice use right there. I think Noisy Elmo actually had two of them worshipping next to each other, so that Plague Cloud was kind of just sitting around killing heretics, I'm willing to bet. Unbeknownst to Noisy Elmo. Unfortunately, the Havocs were kind of watching that point, but were unable to spot on their own. Saints Marine's getting a bit too brazen trying to tag one more Plague Marine model if they had the opportunity. Noisy Elmo's not going to be able to get this cap. Not if that Dreadnought decides to go in in melee. It's actually attacking the wrong model, though, unless it gets a special attack off. Which it does do, and you can see Noisy Elmo was watching that the second that attack went off. And he was actually buying time to get this beautiful flank in. The combination of Blood Crusher and the Plague Marines is going to take out this Dreadnought without much issue. Oh, and that's another big loss for Tiger. It's not looking good for him at all. I mean, just looking at the unit tab, you can see the disparity between the two armies is pretty significant. Plague Champ does have his fist right now and pops one of those Plague Marines right there. One of his brethren who he is currently engaged in combat with. Pops is really the only word I can think of when I see those things explode. Blood Pressure tosses the Heretic aside and then decides to hightail it out of there as the Plague Champion moves in with its Power Fist. A nice looking shot from the Noise Marines. Looks like a squad's gonna go down. Oh no, Tiger drops the GG. 389 to 164. And oh, actually, it looks like it looks like this game's gonna keep going. He managed to take out that Blood Crusher right there. He said GG, but he's gonna keep going. I guess if it's not a tournament game, you know, you don't want to stop playing when someone drops CG because it might still be on. Chaos Lord now in a lot of trouble. Not going to be able to actually contend with that Plague Champ with the Power Fist on his own, I think. Not without any upgrades. He's vanilla himself. Siege Marines pouring in a lot of nice fire. And you can see Tiger's aware of that Kill the Weak. Not letting anything get in his path, but had those heretics positioned in the retreat path to finish him off really kiting around that Chaos Lord to get a quick kill. So a nice, I mean, Tiger's still very much on the back foot, but a nice little engagement there to kind of maybe equalize it a bit. He got the champion, he got the Blood Crusher. Noisy Elmo does have a Dreadnought of his own out on the field right now, though, and Tiger's down by about 300 VPs, so it's not looking too good for him, but he's going to decide to stick it out, I think, and try to do a little something to get himself back in the game. He's got Blood Letters coming out. And blood letters are extremely powerful in retail mode. A nice shot there by the Plague Marines, getting a missile hit on those Chaos Space Marines. Tiger's really on the back foot though, and I'm, I mean, I'm not even sure what he can do at this point to come back. Dropped a Plague Cloud, but it was just a second too late. Had he dropped it maybe back here or a second or two sooner, he may have been able to tag another model or two from those squads and at least kind of try to bleed Noisy Elmo's income a little bit. Dreadnought's moving in, but I don't think Noisy Elmo was expecting Bloodletters to be on the field. The Chaos Havocs are managing to get a couple quick slow shots in, but those Bloodletters doing nasty heavy melee damage, and I don't think that that Chaos Lord is going to be able to finish them off in time. The blood Bloodletters are going to get the kill. Oh, they get knocked away, but uh, they're just going to come right back in and finish it off. That Chaos Heretic Worship, I mean, the Worship in this game, uh, in retail mode with Demons, is very powerful. Continuously gives them energy and health, so you can see, despite all that last engagement, those Blood Letters are sitting nice and happy at full health. Chaos Lord is at level 4, does have his Mantle of Hate, which gives him the Drain Life ability, allows him to, or not even suppress, but to completely immobilize him toss in the air a single entity and drain life from it. Very useful for dealing with heroes or things like Altarks and Librarians. But uh, also good for picking off models out of high expensive squads like Chaos Space Marines or Plague, Plague Marines, things like that. Plague Champion's trying to get some decaps on this wreck. He knows that if he doesn't take out some of these wreck points and get those back into his control, that Noisy Elmo, no matter how much he manages to take out, He's just going to be able to rebuild it and come back. 
I mean, he's taken out two vehicles and his hero, but Noisy Elmo just doesn't care. He's still sitting on a giant pile of requisition right here, ready to head into Tier 3 if he needs to. But uh, in retail, you often see Chaos players just kind of hang out in Tier 2 anyways. Tiger's at 84 VPs, and I mean, he can stall out here and do a good job to try to bring it back, but he's going to have to play very tight. There goes the Drain Life, completely disabling that Plague Champion. He's getting upgraded with his Armor of Pestilence, which will slow him down but make him a lot more tanky, especially against range damage. He already has his Power Fist, which he can slam the ground and negate that kind of thing. One of the Blood Letters goes down to a quick burst of the Havoc's Cannon. The Havocs just retreat and the Bloodletters prioritize the victory point as is necessary. I'm sure they would have liked to have gone and grabbed that requisition point, but right now, 336 to 84, there's no question you got to grab those VPs. Chaos Lord moving in, a uh, little more geared out now. He's got his Blood Maul, which does some very nice anti-infantry damage and grants the Sweeping Doom, which is a great big AoE knockback. Nox Infantry sends them all flying, takes a quick swing at some phased out blood letters, but decides to go ahead and just grab himself that victory point. Oh no, the blood letters over here for Tiger aren't even capping. I'm not sure if he realizes that. There he goes. That may have cost him a few freshest VPs. That tends to happen from time to time. I swear I send things to cap, and maybe I just misclick or miss the point. But sometimes they'll just stand next to the point and not cap. It's very frustrating. Anyways, Noisy Elmo's heading into Tier 3 with plenty of power and requisition. Probably see a Predator or something along those lines. He doesn't quite have enough for a duo, and the power would take quite a while to get it, so... I'd be willing to bet a Predator at this point. And with, with what Tiger has on the field, he doesn't want anything slow and big anyways. He wants something that can quickly get away from those blood letters, kind of maneuver around and kite around those. But with two squads of Bloodletters on the field, and, you know, so long as he uses his worship correctly, he can really kind of hang around in the middle and maybe stall Noisy Elmo out for a little while. Nice choice to retreat there by Noisy Elmo. He could have kind of hung out there for a little bit longer, but he must have recognized that the other squad of Bloodletters could have been waiting in retreat. Nice kill, the week goes off on the Bloodletters. Chaos Lord's gonna try to get a kill or two on that squad. They phase out instead, however, and charge out of there. Meanwhile, the Noise Marines have been kind of firing shots into these heretics, picking off one at a time. There goes one into bits right now. Oh man, I do enjoy when we just get turned into bits. And it's a 2-0 cap against Noisy Elmo, about to be a 3-0 cap. Bloodletters really sh really shining right here. You don't see them much at all anymore in the Elite mod, as they're only power melee, and with Raptors being so prevalent, you kind of don't need the teleport squad that has the same type of melee as, as your tier 1 squad anymore. So anyways, Predator coming onto the field, kind of what I was expecting to see. Noisy Elmo is going to bring that on out here. And meanwhile, Plague Champion punching this building. You see a Noise Marine Blastmaster just get launched out of the building there. Even in that garrison cover, Siege Marines still do some nice damage. But oh no, one gets turned into bits. Noise Marine Squad gets its vengeance. As the Plague Champion gets sight of the new vehicle on the field and decides to fall back. But a triple cap managed to take quite a few VPs off the of Noisy Elmo's stack right there. Noisy Ammo, however, still with tons and tons of requisition. It's just going to be a matter of attrition at this point. Tiger needs to maximize his reservation of pretty much anything he can to really stay in this game and stay on the field. He pretty much can't be off the field for more than a few seconds at any given time at this point in the game with only 55 BPs left. Noisy Ammo holding up right here in this guard tower. Going to use, I guess, that Havoc squad garrisoned up and along with this Predator to kind of deal with those Bloodletters. One lone Bloodletter is escaping. Ch Chaos Lord may have been able to get into the retreat path, but not really worried about it. Two setup teams sitting here on this side of the map. Chaos Lord's charging in, takes a direct hit from that last cannon, though, for some pretty heavy damage. But manages to engage the squads anyways. 
This is actually a pretty good setup over here, considering there's two squads of Bloodletters. He can use these Havocs to constantly pour damage into the squad and then kite around with the tank without worrying about the setup team getting into too much trouble. Chaos Lord looks like he's going to go down again. Even if he gets a kill the week off right here, he's got Bloodletters in his retreat pass, so that's not going to work out too well for him. It won't stop him from getting a nice sync kill with that Blood Maul. However, as soon as he finishes it, those heretics are going to make short work of him. Kill the week goes off again, but it looks like the VPs are ticking down. Nine VPs left for Tiger, but he evens it out, gets that one and one cap right here. Those bloodletters need to finish off the Chaos Lord. They stop capping the point and they don't even get the kill. Oh no. He should have just tried to, I guess, I don't know. He could have tried to teleport and then just use these heretics to cap at that point. I think he should have gone for that kill, but... Oh well, I guess we'll see how things go. Oh my goodness, the Chaos Space Marines changed to the Mark of Corn. That's going to be painful for these heretics. I'm pretty sure those Mark of Corn guys are going to make short work of them, especially when they're taking friendly fire from a Noise Marine Blastmaster. Luckily, a second shot saves them, turns a Chaos Marine into bits. Chaos Predator on this side of the map taking lots of damage from Bloodletters. Looks like it's going to get out of there, though, just barely as the Chaos Lord moves in to deter the push of those Bloodletters. 163 to 9, and Tiger can't lose a VP for pretty much any second at all at this point. With 9 VPs left, you pretty much have to immediately cap back a point the second you start losing points. So it's pretty much all or nothing at this point. Bloodletters hanging out over here with this Predator. I don't think they have a teleport though because they jumped over here to get to the VP. So they get the decap, has a 2-0 cap, 148 to 9. The Predator has to back up. Heretic battle dueling on the, the right VP. Chaos Lord in the center VP. Noise Marines firing all over the place. You hear that kind of very distinctive cacophony as each one fires that kind of wham. I, I can't even... It's like kind of a wobbly... It's kind of like a dubstep cannon, I guess, is what they have. Just kind of a wobbly bass sound every time that thing fires. So, I guess that's what Chaos does, is they figured out... That's what happens in the future, is dubstep gets weaponized. Tiger's still managing to hang on here. He's got a Chaos Dreadnought coming out, gonna probably pop Mark a Cinch on that thing to help deal with these Predators. However, there is the big, the mean, the ugly, the great, unclean one on the field right now. So I think that may just spell disaster for Mr. Tiger. He's got some Plague Marines coming out here. Great unclean one's doing some hurt. Meanwhile, Plague Champion's bashing up some Chaos Space Marines in a big mean melee brawl. Plague Marines hanging out in a garrison, trying to hold out as long as they can and just hang out long enough to get a decap. Here goes the last shot. Will it take out that Predator? It does just barely taps it. Gets the hit and down goes the Predator. Plague Marine in the meantime dealing with these Corn Marines. I'm not actually sure who's going to win this engagement. It's pretty much next shot gets the hit and the Plague Champion gets it. Oh my goodness with 18 HP left one more swing would have done it. There goes another cloud taking out those heretics, preventing them from getting a cap. However, the Chaos Lord's still here in the center. Plague Champion retreats when maybe he should have just tried to go for that BP. I'm not sure if those Noise Marines can see that side or not. I haven't noticed that. He retreats right through the Guo, goes down, but it looks like the cap is going to go down in the center, and that's going to end the game. Oh, very unfortunate because that was a potential comeback moment right there for Tiger in the end, but he just couldn't hold that BP. Kind of similar to the last game we saw, where it's all about that map control when it comes down to it. And oh my goodness, there goes the great unclean one. An Imperial Abyss getting fired in the center right there. I'm not sure if he had the red. He had 100 red at the end, so he probably could have done that sooner, actually, and maybe saved that cap. But hindsight is everything. These guys probably haven't played in a while, but even so, an excellent showing. That was a very interesting game, if you ask me. Even though it was a Chaos Mirror... I actually enjoy mirrors just because you get to see two races played uh, in very different ways, and that's kind of what we saw here tonight uh, with these two, with these two Dawn of War juggernauts right here. Great and clean one about to take the full brunt of Tiger's army as those VPs go down. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the game. I don't want to hear anyone complaining about a retail game after that match.
don't forget we've got that two-on-two Throne of Skulls tournament coming up in a couple weekends that I'll be streaming live. This is Red Rupee. I'll catch you guys next time.